We're talking about uh, something that's important to you today. I think we've been talking about it since the beginning of the year. Vision. And uh, the main thing we're talking about is vision is not a list of goals necessarily, is it? This vision is where you're going, right? Now, the goals, you want the goals you wrote down, you want them to become where you're going, right? That's why you wrote them down. But, of course, vision is where you're actually going. Vision is where you're actually going. Say it again. Vision is where you are actually going. What you actually see when you close your eyes. You're on that journey. You know, vision is a little different. Vision is... uh, you know, you can get up in the morning, work on your vision, or vision can get you up in the morning. <laughs> That's when you know it has you. That's what we want to see. We always said, uh, well, we said this a few weeks ago, vision requires a plan. You have a great vision, you know, you're ready to roll, you got to have a plan. I mean, how exact does it have to be? Come on. Pretty, pretty exact, right? I mean, you got to have, you build a house, they know how many boards and how the measurements are. I mean, it's pretty exact, right? And your plan has to have a plan. Your plan has to be exact. And so you've got to let that plan uh, meditate and get the facts, do your due diligence. You've got you to get things ready. You've got to have it clear before you launch out. So vision always has a plan. So when you get a vision, just hang on. Let's get the plan. So show me your plan. Let's see your business plan. If you went to a bank and asked for a loan to produce this business you have, he'd say, show me a business plan. Show me all the details. Show me the prototype, show me the profit margin, show me the cost, show me the insurance cost, show me how it works. Uh, It looks pretty good. You guys got it all figured out. I can see profit there. I think it's a good risk. We'll take it, right? And so you need to have it uh, weighed out just like that. Now, if you need help with that, there's a lot of great material out there on how to produce a business plan or get those kind of things in writing. You know, one thing you can do is make sure you write it down. Make sure you write the vision. The Bible says make it plain. If it's not plain to you, it's not going to be plain to anyone else, <laughs> right? Okay, you know, we can kind of hope the vision's there, but you got to see the vision, right? So you can share the vision because your vision is going to take more people than you. Your vision is always going to take more people than you, and you got to bring them in on the vision, and it's got to be clear. Amen. So it's got to be clear. It's got to be a blueprint. You're fishing. Where's the fish? What are you using for bait? If you're up in northern part of the country... If you're going after lobsters, I'd ask you for your GPS coordinates. Where'd you drop the traps at? What'd you bait them with? I mean, you have to know where the harp, you know, where's your nets? You got to know where it's at, right? It is so amazing as a pastor. It's so frustrating. I have people come to me and go, well, God said, you know, I had this great vision. I, and it, I'd say, oh, great, fantastic. Tell me about it. I just did. No, I mean, tell me about it. I just did. Who's paying for it? Well, God is. No, I, I understand God gave you the vision, but who's paying for it? I mean, who, well, God is. I mean, this is what they say. God is. And they just stare at you. I say, show me the plan. Show me, show me where the lobsters are. Where's the traps? Show me the nets. Where, where, how's it going to come to pass, right? And they just kind of blank. Unfortunately, friend, this is how Christians think it, lo- how it works. And we'll talk more about this. We've got a lot of shipwrecks out there. I mean, it's bad. We'll talk about it. You got your tissues ready? I hope not. Anyway, (laughs) I'm going to help you tonight. All right, so last week we said that every vision takes preparation, right? All right, so preparation. I said I can tell how big your vision is by what you're doing right now, what you prepare for. If I go by your house and, hey, how you doing, Ralph? He says, oh, don't interrupt me. I'm, I'm in my seventh hour of some great series of some kind of soap opera. Hey, don't interrupt me. I'm just, uh, you know, I've been playing games all, video games for 10 hours straight. You know, I'm I'm almost there. I go, what? You got 10 hours to burn like that? You don't have much vision, do you? Now, you can tell if you have vision by what you do with your time. Time is the commodity of vision, isn't it? And so, you know, I know that's going to, you know, pastor, don't talk like that because I feel like I'm such, I'm so behind. Well, you are. (laughs) Listen, I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to help you be honest with yourself. Uh, What's your vision? It'll show up. You're preparing for it, right? Listen, vision and dreams are a God thing. Preparation's your thing. You got to prepare. 
All right, today's message, we're going to continue along that line after preparation comes. I made a match, kind of sound, installation. I just made a match. Preparation. Next is installation. Basically, you, gotta, you have to someday, you got to step into it. You can have all the preparation, the blueprints, everything all ready to go, the board stacked up, the nails stacked up, the blueprint stacked up, everything ready, but someone's got to turn the switch and go, now, ready to jump into it, right? Procrastination is not in your life, is it? That's not, procrastinating is not the, uh, not the lifestyle of a believer. God says go, or he says not, you know, he, it's not a ga- guessing game. We're going to talk about that. Installation, the moment you step into it, a common mistake is timing. Understand this, timing is just as important almost as the idea itself. Timing to step into it. Matthew 13, 44 says this, the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field. When a man finds it, he hides it again. And then in his joy, he goes and sells all he has and buys that field. See, he's wise enough to know he, he has the idea, he has the vision, he can see it clearly, God gave it to him. The treasure came out of his spirit, he, he's hearing God, he has the vision, I got the answer, but he hides it again. He's wise enough to know to hide it, he's not ready to capture it. He doesn't quite have the details. In this case, he doesn't have the money yet, he's gotta go back, he sells all that he has, he's gotta position himself to be able to occupy the vision. Say, occupy the vision. Christians have not been taught properly. They get confused because when God speaks to them, they think it's time to go. Usually when God speaks to you, it's time to prepare. He leads with glimpses and dreams to prepare you for the timing of his timing to launch. And so many immature believers get so excited about the vision, they mistake it for the end, and they have all kinds of problems. Trust me, I've seen it. I've seen churches crash and burn because the pastor jumped too soon, didn't have the money, the resources, the people, nothing happened. I've seen businesses crash and burn. Someone goes out and borrows a half million dollars on an idea, not prepared, goes bankrupt, and they blame God for it. No, you missed the timing. Good idea. You weren't ready. You weren't ready yet, right? So you have to allow the timing to be right, to position you and posture you at the right season to make that move. And the Holy Spirit will help you with that. All right, you you ready? Anyway, I told you that uh, the tendency, especially in our culture, is to bypass the preparation phase. I mean, as long as you got a website, man, you got it made. You can lie all you want on a website. You ever remember that ad, where's the beef at? <laughs> man, it's sad. <laughs> Everything looks good on the, on the website, and people get it and go, where's the beef, man? <laughs> you know, what's... You look great on the website, but man, something's wrong here, you know? <laughs> and people get themselves in a huge mess. Huge mess. Of course, we've had a company for 30-some years, and we had a policy. Uh, we wouldn't let people go full-time. I said, oh, no, you're not going full-time until we say you can. Oh, but I hate my job. I hate my job. You're not going full-time. I said, no, you're not going full-time until you can at least make half what you make full-time, three months in a row, part-time. That's basically, you know, you can't do it. We're not letting you. Well, I hired this guy, and without telling us, he went full-time. Well, that's, that's the wrong terminology. To say he went full-time, I, I don't know how you explain that. In his mind, he went full-time. Let's say that. <laughs> he didn't do anything full-time. He said, oh, he, I found out about it. He said, oh, I got three months severance, man. It's perfect. I got three months to train and get ready to go, and I'm, I'm going full-time right now. I said, I, you know, do you know he did not make one phone call during those three months? Never read one book? You know what happened after three months? He calls me up because that, his family's in trouble financially. I said, well, what, do you, what do you expect to happen? <laughs> you know, it's like full-time in your mind. You got to walk this thing out, brother. We have rules to help protect you, you know, not to hurt you. I know you hate your job, but you hate being broke worse, I hope. (laughs) Proverbs chapter 20, verse 4 says, sluggards do not plow in season. They miss the season. Listen, missing the season is going to cost you. They do not plow in season, so at harvest time they look but find nothing. They're deceived. 
because they look. You follow it? They actually look for harvest. I get this. They actually look for harvest, but they did not prepare in season. They missed the season of preparation. They missed the season, and thus they had no harvest, but yet they look. Boy, we could spend a long time there in today's culture. <laughs> you know, it's crazy stuff. Listen, Jesus trained for 30 years for three years of ministry. He trained for 30 years. People expect to train for six months and, you know, they don't. Listen, there's a, there's a season of apprenticeship in any vision, a preparation. You know, God give you a vision. Sometimes that vision takes years to come to pass. So he can posture you with the influence and the position you need to walk it out. I and mean, look at Joseph. Look at the journey he took all through that Potiphar situation, all through the jail, all those years. God used that season to position him right at the right time to interpret Pharaoh's dream and position him to deliver the nation of Israel. Hi, I'm Gary Cassie, and you will never fulfill your destiny until you fix your money thing. Visit GaryCassie.com and don't forget to hit the subscribe button below for more amazing weekly videos on fixing your money thing. And thanks for watching.